Well, I'm glad to hear what you were saying too about the, the bonds of association and solidarity. Um, is that this is one of the things that I think it's also most difficult um, to, commu to communicate to people about how this is absolutely critical for any time long-term sustainability. And um, you know, I look at the labor movement, which I've been active with. Uh, my, my family's been labor folks from the beginning. Um, but um, one of the things that seems to me is that's one of the few places where you have the historical memory of what those bonds of association mean in very practical material terms. That's one of the reasons why there's such an effort to destroy the labor movement. I mean, the U.S. has a very violent labor history mm -hmm. as compared with comparable countries. And the labor movement several times has been smashed. I, I, one of the great books, I'm sure you know, of, of American labor history, David Montgomery's uh, Rise and Fall of the Labor Movement. The fall that he's talking about is the 1920s. Uh, Woodrow Wilson's Red Scare practically wiped out the labor movement. Uh, and in the 1920s, you know, uh, right wing columnists, the jour journalists from England and Australia, were coming here and they couldn't believe how working people were treated. And, you know, you couldn't get away with that in conservative circles and other countries. Well, it did reconstitute in the 30s and in the 40s even more so. And it, but the backlash started right away. I mean, as soon as the war was over in you know, 1947, Taft Hartley, you know, uh, start going with huge campaigns to try to uh, undermine support for labor and undermine this notion of solidarity. I mean, it's not just labor. Uh, you take a look at the, what's called the Republican Party. It's not a political party in any traditional sense anymore. For the last 20 years, it's been so deep in corporate pockets, you need a telescope to find it. Now, they try to cover it up, you know, so we've got to have to, uh, no taxes on the rich because of their job creators. You know? they got so much money coming out of their pockets so they don't know what to do with it. They're not. But you keep saying job creators, job killing, and the media just repeat it as if you know, it's kind of like North Korea. Yeah. But, but, it, but, but the point, of, but, but if you look at what they're opposed to, it's very striking. It's not just labor. Of course they're opposed to labor. Uh, they're opposed to Social Security. Why are they opposed to Social Security? Why do they pretend that Social Security is a deficit problem when they know it isn't? Front page story in USA Today, they know it isn't. Uh, why are they trying to destroy public schools? You take a look at the things they're trying to destroy, and it's the ones that are based on solidarity. Mm -hmm. Social Security, the fundamental idea is, I'm supposed to care if the disabled widow across town doesn't have food in it. And that's what they're trying, and, and same with public schools, like I don't have kids in school, but the public school system means that I'm happy to pay my taxes so the kid across the street can go to school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, all of these things that are the targets of uh, what's called conservative, meaning ultra reactionary propaganda, and across the board in the media and everywhere else, is really aimed at the conception that you ought to care about other people. I mean, that's kind of the opposite of the, you know, kind of Randian notion. We just are out for ourselves and hope everyone else. Uh, and uh, that battle goes way back. In fact, back to the early days of, it's very interesting to read the, it was very lively labor press in the mid-19th century, the early days of industrialization. And one of the themes that comes through, it really resonates today, is a denunciation of what they call the new spirit of the age. This is 1850, the new spirit of the age. Gain wealth, forgetting all but self. That's what they regard as just undermining their basic humanity. Uh, working people, you know, factory girls uh, from the farms, artisans from the boss. And, and that battle's still going on. Gain wealth, forgetting all but self, so the hell with Social Security, get rid of public schools, and destroy unions, uh, everybody in it for yourself for themselves, but I'm going to win because I have all the power, so you guys are just going to suffer. You're going to be the slave labor force, the unemployed force. Yeah, and I said, you know, one of the things that you said, like, um, this question was asked you last night, it's a question that you hear over and over and over again about, um, well, what can we do? That question. 
And it always astounds me, right? The story I always tell is like, you know, I grew up with punk rock, right? Punk rock was a DIY culture, right? You saw a problem, right? You whined about it for a while, and then you did something about it. Um, and it's been remarkable to me um, that that question is out there, and the agency that's just given over in the question itself, right? By saying, well, what can I do? Um, and one of the things that you said in response to that was, look, there's no shortage of opportunities, right? And I think you said there's, there's a shortage of dedication Right. Um, There's a sense that it should work tomorrow, and this is part of the, part of the. I mean, it's understandable when young people, you know, yeah, I want to talk, sure. I want to do something else. But uh, uh, what may, I mean, whatever you think about the old Communist Party, you know, uh, the people. There was one really good thing about it. Uh, they knew that they were in it for the long mm -hmm. term. Uh, you're not going to win tomorrow. You're going to have a defeat, but we got to be around for the next time. Uh, the next time, uh, and you get a kind of continuity of, and uh, you know, there were learning experiences. You learned how to have a demonstration, uh, how to organize a strike. You have to learn it new every time. Uh, there's always somebody around to turn the mimeograph machine in those days. You know, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, that kind of dedication and willingness to be in it for a long-term struggle, that's, it's been a little bit swept away by the more or less instant gratification culture. Uh, you can see it in the, it was true in the 60s too. So for example, in the uh, 1968, when students uh, uh, had a strike at Columbia, there was a big strike, uh, and sat in, in the president's office. I remember you know, I was, kids I knew I was talking to. Them. And they really thought that if they sat in the president's office for a couple of weeks, uh, there would be a world of peace and love. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so on. You know, it doesn't happen that way. You're going to get rousted out by the cops. It'll be pretty brutal. And you've got to be ready for the next step. Uh, and that didn't happen. Uh, so when they were kicked out, it sort of disappeared. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, that kind of thing is what you have to get over. It was the same with, say, the Iraq War. It was, it was the first time in, in the history of imperialism, first time that there was a massive protest before the war was officially launched. But then the war came, of course, and the protest declined yeah. just when it should have been picking up. But that's the kind of thing that has to be overcome. It's not going to be an easy struggle. Nothing ever is. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that um, one of the things that I find um, remarkable, I always go back to um, like Miles Horton when he talks about the, the long haul, and I thought that that tradition, uh, what I remember, I didn't even read about him until I was well into grad school. Um, and what was remarkable to me about the fact that that tradition is so far gone from any kind of mainstream education, which is such an integral part of um, like the specificity of American culture um, and the whole idea that you're educating for the long haul. That things like teaching folks how to engage in strike action how to organize, how to talk to people about organizing, that that was productive work. Um, but you didn't expect to see the results of it, maybe even in your lifetime. No, that's true. Um, and the civil rights is good. The you know, civil rights movement took off in the 30s. And it, you know, Martin Luther King, great figure, but it was in 63. 